Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to CSS, and this will be the first class in the CSS track. So as I've talked about before in the HTML track, whenever you're going to be building a website, you're going to need multiple different languages uh, to actually make that website do whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, so I did an entire series on an introduction to HTML, and as I talked about in that series, HTML is basically the building blocks for your website. Think about, of it, think about it as the foundation, think about it as the beams, as the rafters, that type of thing. Then you're going to use other languages to fill out uh, the web page that you're going to create. So if you want uh, real-time interactivity, uh, then you're going to be using a programming language called JavaScript. Uh, if you want to create an HTML form and then be able to send the data in that form somewhere, then you're going to need a back-end programming language such as uh, PHP, Python, or possibly Ruby on Rails. Now, one of the important things if you're going to be building a, a web page or a web application is you're going to want that web page or web application to look pretty. I know, I know. <laughs> a lot of geeks out there, a lot of technology professionals out there are like, ah, why does it have to look pretty? It doesn't, it doesn't actually have to look nice. But in fact, if you want to be able to sell uh, your web projects uh, to customers and clients and get your boss to continue paying your paycheck, and then your website and your web application is in fact going to need to look pretty. And that is where CSS comes in, cascading style sheets. So basically what CSS does it is, is it allows you to format your HTML uh, that you will be writing out, right? So uh, in the introduction to HTML series, uh, we talked about using H1 tags, heading tags, P tags. We talked about tables, all of those types of things. And in that introductory series, basically we were able to print things out within a web browser and it was rather basic. It was rather plain. Here's a heading, here's your paragraph, here's your table. Well, what if you want to make it pretty? What if you want your headings to be in color? Ooh. What if you want your headings to be aligned, either in the center or possibly over actually aligned on the right of the screen, something like that? Uh, what if you want borders around your tables? What if you want individual cells uh, to be uh, to have borders and that type of thing? That is where CSS comes in. So cascading style sheets, what this allows you to do is actually format the text that you will be printing out with HTML. So it is important to understand when we're talking about CSS, you you cannot use CSS on its own. Again, with HTML, you can build an HTML web page on its own. You don't actually need JavaScript. You don't actually need CSS. You don't actually need any other coding language uh, to create a website with HTML. You can have a very basic, very ugly, but probably also pretty fast website uh, just building it with HTML. If you have static web pages, again, multiple static web pages that link to each other, a couple of pictures, that type of deal, you can code that all in HTML and you can actually create a website that you can put on the internet and people can go to it and then laugh at it because it looks so bloody ugly. Uh, the important thing to understand with CSS is you cannot do that with CSS. All CSS allows you to do is say how the text that you're printing out uh, in in HTML is supposed to look. So if all you have is CSS without HTML, then you can't really do anything. So it is important to understand that CSS is the style sheet. It's the styling for the HTML that you're going to be printing out. Uh, so normally, if you're going to be hearing about CSS, you will normally hear about CSS3 and HTML5. So again, whenever we're talking about coding languages, uh, as with all types of technology, there have been multiple versions of all these different languages. Uh, so HTML is now up to HTML5. It's been at HTML5 for, I don't know, somewhere around about 10 years now. Uh, and and CSS has been up to version uh, 3 since actually about 1999. I was surprised. I thought CSS 3 had come along a little bit later than that. But they've been actually working on CSS 3 uh, since 1999. So the important thing to understand whenever you start uh, thinking about CSS and HTML5 is that now 
they're kind of sort of synonymous. So it's important to understand, uh, when you were dealing with uh, HTML4, so HTML version 4, there was a lot of formatting that was built into HTML for the tags themselves. Uh, if you wanted um, uh, text to be a certain color, you could actually code that with HTML. If you wanted text to be aligned, you could actually code that with HTML. Again, with borders and all that types of things in tables. In HTML4, you would actually do that within HTML. And then if you wanted to do fancier things, then you would do CSS. So again, you go back about 10 or 15 years. If you wanted to do basic formatting uh, with HTML4, you would actually do that within HTML4. And then if you wanted to do fancier things, then you would use something like CSS. Well, as time went by, people started using CSS more and more and more and more and more to the point when HTML5 came out, they said, well, why don't we just use CSS for the HTML formatting? Instead of having HTML formatting in HTML and also use CSS, since everybody's using CSS anyway, why don't we all kind of combine it into one thing? And so that's one of the things you'll notice whenever you start dealing with HTML5. The difference between HTML4 and HTML5 is CSS and a, no a number of different types of functionality were actually built into HTML5 uh, from the get-go. Again, uh, they've been working on HTML for you know almost 20 years. They've been figuring out what did work, what didn't work. And as they figured out what did work, they started combining things more and more and more. So once you start using HTML5, you will you will use by default you will use CSS in order to format your HTML5 documents. So that's an important thing to understand, and that's why a lot of times, again, now, like uh, like back in the day, back in the day, if you picked up some kind of study guide, uh, you might get an HTML study guide and a CSS study guide, and those were two different things. Uh, one of the reasons why now, whenever you pick up a study guide, you'll normally see CSS and HTML is because basically with HTML5, they're more or less synonymous uh, in order to be able to write HTML5 code decently. It's not going to look ugly as hell. You're going to need to know CSS. And if you're going to learn CSS, you need to know HTML because that's the only way to actually print anything out. So today we're going to be doing this introduction to CSS so you get an idea of what you're dealing with with cascading style sheets. And we can go ahead with this track. Now, the important thing to understand about CSS is basically in order to make CSS uh, work, you're simply going to be typing out code. You have to think about how you want a font to look and basically then you're just going to go do a little bit of research to figure out what CSS you have to write to make your font look that way. So for the series, for this entire CSS series, um, I'm going to be using this, per this, this book, uh, Visual Quick Start Guide. If you follow me for any length of time, you know I like the series. Again, they do not support me. They do not give me any money. Um, I just, this is one of those series I just genuinely really like. Uh, so if you're looking for a, a paper book to actually follow along with uh, and be able to look at different examples, uh, visual quick start guide, HTML and CSS, this would be a good way to go. Um, again, when you're dealing with HTML5 and CSS, you don't necessarily have to get the latest edition. One thing to be thinking about if you're learning PHP, if you're learning Python, if you're learning a lot of different coding languages, it is vital you get the latest edition of a book, right? Because there can be massive changes. Uh, if you take all the time and energy to learn Python 2, that's not going to do very good for you in a Python 3 world. Uh, the cool part about HTML5 and CSS is Eh, more or less, it's been the same for a decade now. So this is one of the few languages, this is one of the few books uh, where you can go to the bargain bin at your local Barnes & Noble and pick it up for a dollar, and it actually should be good enough for you. Uh, so that's just something to be thinking about if you're, if you're, you're thinking about uh, learning CSS. Again, uh, a lot of things that I'll be showing you, a lot of the demonstrations I'll be showing you are very basic. Okay, you want text to look this way, you want an image to look this way, you want your tables to look this way, okay this is how you write out the CSS and voila again with this series whenever I'm teaching you anything I have to limit how much I teach you folks. I'm not trying to teach you everything that CSS has to offer. Uh, when I generally do these series, I generally do somewhere between 10 to 40 different classes showing you the large examples of what you can do. The important thing for you to understand is if I don't get to a particular subject in the series, literally all you have to do is a Google search and to figure out, and it's like, oh, okay, I wanna, I wanna be able to dynamically resize images in my HTML page. 
and just type that in and see what pops up. And what you'll what you'll normally find out is, you know, with a couple of lines of code with CSS, uh, you'll be able to do whatever it is uh, that you want to do. And it should be relatively simple as long as you understand the basic concepts of CSS. So this is a study guide that we will be using for the series. But again, with this, it's not a lot of it's basically like a lot of memorization. It's one of those things. It's either memorization or, or copy and paste where you go, okay, this is what I want to do. You figure out how to do it. Copy, paste, modify a couple things and go on with it. So now that you have a little bit of an understanding, let's go over to my demonstration system. I'm actually going to show you an example from a website called w3schools.com. If you have not been to w3schools.com and you plan to continue learning how to do web app development, I would highly recommend that you go there. Uh, not only do they give you a lot of useful information, a lot of references, but they also give you the ability to test and play around with uh, what they are showing you with their particular examples. So let's go over to the computer. I'll show you a little bit about w3schools.com uh, and then I'll show you the difference between how things used to be written in, in HTML4 without CSS and then how things are written now uh, with HTML5 and CSS. So here we are at my demonstration uh, computer and I've pulled up w3schools.com just to give you a little bit of an example of CSS and also just to show you that this exists. Again, if you do not want to buy a book, you do not have to buy a book in order to learn CSS. Uh, W3schools has a lot of good references for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL, Python, PHP, and more. And basically you can go through and you can just select one of their tutorials and they spell everything out. One of the things that I really like about W3schools, especially for new people is if you do not know how to spin up a web server, basically you don't understand how to deal with servers and that type of thing, you can actually try the demonstrations uh, within their website without actually messing with actually having to spin up a server or whatever. Uh, so they have an example here of CSS, just kind of give you an example of what CSS looks like. And so this is what CSS is going to look like for us. Uh, so for here, a background hyphen color, uh, it's going to be light blue for H1. Again, when we're going to be formatting these particular tags, uh, the color is going to be white. The text alignment is going to be center. And for the P tag, the font family, so you can do things like change the font family, is going to be veranda, and font size is going to be 20 pixels. If we go over here, we can actually do this, try it yourself, and we can see what this looks like. And again, this is one of the reasons I like W3 Schools. Uh, so we can see what the HTML document looks like. We can see body, background color equals light blue. So we can see that this is light blue. H1 color is white. So this is an H1 here, color is white. Text align center, we can see that it's aligned in the center. P font family equals uh, Ver uh, Verdania. Uh, so this is a red Verdania font family and then font size equals 20. If we go down here, we can then see this is where uh, the tags are actually used. So basically with CSS, what you do is you say what the formatting should look like and then within the normal HTML, uh, that's the formatting that will be used. So we're, we're saying what the H1 should look like, we're saying what the P tag should look like, and then when we're actually writing things out with the H1 tag and the P tag, uh, that will come out here, right? So my first CSS example, that is in the H1 tag. If we look up here, H1 is white, text line equals center. So my first CSS example will be white and it will be in the center. P, this is a paragraph. Again, Verdana, uh, font family, font size 20. So it would be the Verdana font family and uh, font size will be 20. Uh, if we take this and we say font size will be 40 and then we click run, we can see now that the font size is 40, that it's nice and big. If we want the color for the H1 to, I don't know, be red, uh, again, you can just change this and now you can see that it's red. So this gives you a basic example of how CSS works. So basically what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be setting up the style for the different tags and for the background again for the black background here we can simply do blue we can do run now it's going to be blue so basically we set up all the styling and then when we're writing out the HTML document that styling will be used for the tags so on and so forth so with that one of the things I want to show you is what the old HTML4 uh, formatting looked like versus the new CSS formatting so if we minimize this 
we can take a look. Um, and basically, I have created a, a crappy little HTML page uh, called CSS versus HTML HTML. Again, if you want to do this example, I'm doing this on my MacBook Pro, so I'm using text edit. But all you need is a basic text editor. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. In the Mac world, you can use text edit. If you're in the Linux world, you can use gedit, nano, vim, whatever else. The important thing is that when you save the file, you save it as a .htm or .htm file uh, and so what I've done here is this first line is old school uh, HTML formatting and the second line is new school CSS formatting uh, so what we have here is so we have the h1 tag like you would have learned uh, if you took my introduction to HTML course and then what we're going to say here is a line equals center so this is how you would align uh, formatting or, or you would align text in the old days. You would say, say align equals center. And then if you want to give text something like color, you then use this tag called font. You then say color and then you say what you want the color to be. So you want this color to be red. You then have to close the font tag. So basically uh, anything in between these two font tags, that will be whatever you, you've set it up to be. So you do have to close that and then you close the h1 tag so that is how old school html4 would look if you're writing it out for formatting new school with css basically what you do is you would do h1 now this is something called inline css we'll talk about this in, a, in another class but for inline css what we're going to say is style equals and then we are going to give the formatting for this particular text so for here we're going to do text uh, hyphen align and then we use colon instead of equals and so we're going to align it to center we then do a semicolon as a delimiter uh, so again in css there's things like delimiters you have to pay attention to so we're going to use a semicolon as a delimiter then we're going to say the color is colon and that's going to be red and then we're going to delimit with the semicolon there and then we are going to close with the double quotation mark and then we're going to close the h1 tag then I'm simply printing out this is CSS and then I'm closing the h1 tag again you'll notice here I'm not using the font tag so in many ways this comes out to be a lot simpler if we go over uh, and I double click CSS versus HTML this then opens up and basically what you can see here is this is HTML4 coding. So we can see that it is red and it is in the center. And then we can see the bottom one, this is CSS. So this is red and it is in the center. So this just goes to show you that what you're doing with CSS, many of the things you could do previously with HTML4, but CSS makes it easier and especially makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with large projects. And we'll talk about that in classes to come. One of the important things to understand though, is even though uh, theoretically the HTML4 um, formatting has been deprecated you're not supposed to use it anymore uh, you can see that even now in 2020 you can still use the old html form for formatting if you want uh, the reason for this is web browsers are expected to be able to open uh, just about any web page that they're presented with so if somebody designed a web page back in 1998 and they've never updated it uh, then then the, the the browser still needs to be able to open it up and still needs to make it viewable so even even though you're not supposed to use HTML4 coding, you do still have some people that are using it and you may run across it in projects simply because it does work. It is important to understand though, is if you're gonna be developing web projects, especially for customers, clients, for your boss, even though HTML4 coding still works for formatting, you really do need to go over to CSS. Again, at least for, at least for a decade, at least for a decade, this has been the standard way to do it. So if you do HTML4, it's just gonna cause annoying problems for people that have to go behind you. But this is kind of gives you a, an idea of what you're gonna be dealing with with CSS. So there you go. Now you have a brief understanding of what CSS is, cascading style sheets. So this is how you're going to be formatting the HTML text that you're going to be printing out. Again, with HTML, you write the H1 tag and you do the titles and you do the paragraphs and you do the, the tables and you insert the images and you do all of that, but then to actually make all of that look pretty, you're now going to be using CSS. Again, you can theoretically use HTML for formatting. It does work even though you're not supposed to use it, but again, 
2020 and beyond, you really need to be using CSS. Uh, when you start looking at the versions for CSS, again, we're at version uh, three for CSS, but we've been at version three of CSS for a long time now. I'm not sure specifically when everybody transferred over to it, uh, but, but CSS three, uh, they started developing it in 1999 and it has been the standard again for about 10 years. Uh, there is no big uh, new CSS uh, on the horizon. So this is not one of those things where you have to worry about it and go, oh, I'm learning CSS three now, but what about when they change things for CSS four? They may change some stuff when CSS four comes out, but Again, that's kind of one of those things not to worry about. Now, when you are dealing with CSS and you are dealing with HTML5 now, do realize that they're more or less synonymous. Again, in the old days, you had HTML4 and you had CSS. You didn't necessarily have to use CSS. Again, uh, there was formatting that was actually built into HTML4, but now with HTML5, uh, some of the improvements with HTML5 is a lot of this other functionality has been brought in from other technologies uh, to make it easier to code HTML5 uh, websites. So again, we're talking about things like CSS. CSS is now basically built into HTML5, so you will simply use uh, CSS whenever you're, you're developing an HTML5 five web page so don't realize again whenever you're going out there to buy a book uh, genuinely 10 15 years ago uh, you would buy a CSS book and you would buy an HTML book in order to be able to learn this material now again just buy one book because they're more or less synonymous with HTML5. Again, if you're gonna be going out there and you're looking for education material, this is one of the few times, this is one of the few times you can get something out of the bargain bin and, and actually get a book that is probably worthwhile. Again, HTML5 and CSS3, these have been around for a decade at this point. Unless you're trying to do something incredibly specific if, if you get something from, you know, a book from 2012, honestly, it's, it's probably going to be fine for you. So again, feel free to go to the library, get a book out of the library, so on and so forth. Even if you get one that's like a previous version, everything should be good enough. Uh, if you're worried about anything, again, that website, w3schools.com, is an absolutely terrific resource for CSS, HTML, PHP, and a lot of other coding languages. So with that, as always, I enjoyed doing this video and look forward to seeing the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.